1920 APFA season week three. We have the Cleveland Tigers at the Dayton Triangles. The Dayton Triangles come in at 1-0 and are coached by Nelson Talbot. The Cleveland Tigers come in with playing their first APFA game and are coached by Stan Kofal. There is no score. <clears throat> the game ends in a scoreless tie and I have nothing else to report on this game. This is our first scoreless tie in what will become the NFL history. Thank you for joining once again. The Triangles fall to 1-0-1 and the Tigers 0-0-1. Nineteen twenty APFC APFA season week three continues as the Chicago Tigers travel to face the Chicago No, I got that backwards. The Chicago Cardinals travel across town to face the Chicago Tigers. It is Sunday, October tenth, nineteen twenty. In front of five thousand people, the Chicago Tigers come in the game at O and O, same as the Cardinals, both playing their first NFL game. The Tigers are coached by and I apologize if I pronounce this name wrong, Goyle Falcon, while the Cardinals are coached by Patty Driscoll. The game ends in a scoreless tie, second scoreless tie of the week, and both teams fall to 0-0-1, or 0-0-1, depending on how you call it. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more APFA 1920, Week 3. 1920, Week 3, Sunday, October 10th, the Fort Porter at Rochester Jefferson's. Fort Porter is the non-APFA member. There is no scoring summary available. However, there is a scoring by quarters, and the Jeffersons would win the game. After one, Rochester led 26-0. At the half, Rochester led 39-0. After three, Rochester led 60 to nothing. And your final score was a Rochester Jefferson's 66 the Fort Porter Zero. Rochester was coached by Jack Forsyth, and they would make it to 2 and 0. Oh. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next 1920 APFA scoring summary video. 3 APFA game takes place as the Cleveland Panthers, a non-APFA team member, travels to play the Detroit Heralds. The Detroit Heralds play their first APFA game against coach Billy Marshall and his squad. There is no known scoring summary other than the Panthers scored on a return of some kind and a rush. But the scoring by quarters goes like this. After one, Detroit six, Cleveland zero. After at the half, Detroit led 19-0. And after three, the Detroit Heralds led the Cleveland Panthers 33-0. I'm sorry, 33-7. 33-7. And your final score, the APFA member Detroit Heralds 40, Cleveland Panthers 14. The Heralds get to 1-0. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for the next Week 3 APFA video. 1920. Good afternoon. The next 1920 APFA Week 3 video is the Hammond Pros making their APFA debut against the 2-0 Rock Island Independence on Sunday, October 10th, 1920. In front of 2,554 spectators, the Rock Island Independence had no coach and the Hammond Pros were coached by Hank Gillio. In the second quarter, Fred Chicken of the Independents ran the ball in from one yard out. Rube Ursella hit the extra point, and the Independents led 7-0. Then Waddy Kuehl ran the ball from five yards out. There was no extra point, and the Independents led 13-0 at the half. There was no scoring in the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, Waddy Kuehl caught a 35-yard pass from Arnie Wyman, Bobby Marshall hit the extra point, and the Independents led 20 to nothing. Then Jerry Mansfield caught a 20-yard pass from Arnie Wyman. There was no extra point attempted, and the Hammond Pros fell to the Rock Island Independents 26 to 0. This brought Rock Island's record to 3 and 0, and Hammond fell to 0 and 1. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next 1920 APFA Week 3 video. 
Welcome to the next APFA 1920 Week 3 video. Today we look at the Columbus Panhandles at the Akron Pros, played Sunday, October 10th, 1920. Time unknown. The Akron Pros come into the game at 1-0, coached by LG Tobin. The Columbus Panhandles come into the game at 0-1, coached by Ted Nasser. Here is the scoring summary. In the first quarter, Frank McCormick ran a three-yard rush. Charlie Copley hit the extra point, and Akron led 7-0. In the second quarter, Frank McCormick had a rushing touchdown of unknown yardage. Charlie Copley hit the extra point, and the pros led 14-0. Then Harry Harris had an unknown rushing touchdown, yardage touchdown. Charlie Copley hit the extra point, and the Akron pros led 21-0 at the half. In the third quarter, Bob Nash, Bob Nash, Recovered a fumble in the end zone. Charlie Copley hit the extra point, and the Akron Pros led 28-0. Then Fred Sweetland had a rushing touchdown of unknown distance. Charlie Copley hit the extra point, and the Akron Pros led 35-0. After three. In the fourth quarter, a safety was recorded to give the Akron Pros a 37-0 win. The Akron Pros get to 2-0. The Columbus fan Panhandles fall to 0-2. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next 1920 APFA Week 3 video. Next 1920 APFA Week 3 video. This game is the Decatur Staleys hosting the Kalani Walworths. Two teams named after the businesses that sponsored them. The Decatur Staleys, an APFA member, come into the game at 1-0 and are coached by George Hallis. While the Kalani Walworths are playing their first game and are not coached and are not members of the APFA. The game is played on Sunday, October 10th, 1920 at Staley Field in Decatur, Illinois, with an attendance of 1,500. The scoring summary. In the first quarter, Dutch Sternemann ran in an unknown, unknown yardage touchdown. No extra point. The Staley's led 6-0. Then Dutch Sternemann ran in a touchdown from an unknown yardage. Hugh Blacklock hit the extra point, and the Staley's led 13-0. In the second quarter, Dutch Sternemann ran in another touchdown of unknown distance. No extra point uh, uh, successful. The Decatur Staley's led 19-0. Then Bob Kohler ran in a touchdown, unknown yardage. No extra point successful. The Staley's led 25-0 at the half. In the third quarter, an unknown player for the Walworths returned a punt for a touchdown. The extra point was successful, and the Decatur Staley's led 25-0. The Staley's would go on to win 20, or I'm sorry, 25-7. The Staley's would go on to win 25-7 and get to 2-0. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next 1920 Week 3 video. Good afternoon, and welcome to the next 1920 Week 3 video. This video looks at the Toledo Maroons at the Canton Bulldogs. The Toledo Maroons... Maroons are not an APFA member, there is no known coach for them, and their record is 0-0 zero zero as they've not played an APFA game. The Canton Bulldogs are... The Canton Bulldogs are an APFA member, they come into the game at 1-0 and, and are coached by the legendary Jim Thorpe. It is Sunday, October 10th, 1920. Scoring by quarters. Scoring summary. In the first quarter, Ike Martin runs a touchdown from unknown yardage. Al Feeney hits the extra point, and the Bulldogs lead 7-0. Then in the second quarter, Johnny Hendren runs a touchdown from unknown yardage. Al Feeney hits the extra point, and the Bulldogs lead 14-0. Then an unknown pass is caught. For a touchdown from passer Tex Grigg, Al Feeney hits the extra point, and the Canton Bulldogs lead 21-0 at the half. In the third quarter, Ike Martin runs a touchdown from an unknown distance. Tex Grigg hits the extra point. Al Feeney... Sorry, let me replay, repeat that score. That is not a rushing touchdown. I apologize. In the third quarter, Ike Martin catches a pass from Tex Grigg of an unknown distance. Al Feeney hits the extra point, and the Canton Bulldogs lead 28-0. Then Tex Grigg runs a touchdown in himself from an unknown distance. Al Feeney hits the extra point, and the Bulldogs lead 35-0. In the fourth quarter, Pete Kallick runs a touchdown from an unknown distance. The extra point is missed. The Canton Bulldogs go on to win 41-0 and get to 2-0. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next 1920 Week 3 APFA game. 
Welcome to the last video for week three in 1920. As the All Buffalo hosts the Buffalo All Americans, All Buffalo, excuse me, the Buffalo All Americans host All Buffalo. I apologize. All Buffalo is not a member of the NF or the APFA, but comes in the game at 0-1. It is not known who their coach is. The Buffalo All Americans, a member of the APFA, come in with a record of 1-0 and are coached by Tommy Hugett. It is Sunday, October 10th, 1920. Here is the scoring summary. In the first quarter, Bodie Weldon gets a rushing touchdown of unknown distance, Heine Miller hits the extra point, and the All-Americans lead 7-0. Then in the second quarter, Oki Anderson takes a punt to the end zone. Not sure what that means, if it's a punt return or, or blocks a punt. There is no extra point, and the All-Americans lead 13-0. Then... Buffalo coach Tommy Huguet gets a rushing touchdown of unknown yardage. Heine Miller hits the extra point, and the All-Americans lead 20 to nothing. Then Bodie Weldon catches a pass from Tommy Huguet from an unknown distance. Oki Anderson hits the extra point, and the Buffalo All-Americans lead 27 nothing at the half. In the third quarter, Oki Anderson gets a rushing touchdown from an unknown distance. He then hits his own extra point, and the All-Americans lead 34 nothing. In the fourth quarter, Heine Miller hits a 34-yard field goal to extend the Buffalo All-Americans lead to 37-0. Then Murray Shelton recovers a fumble in the end zone. Oki Anderson hits the extra point, and the Buffalo All-Americans lead 44-0. Then Tommy Huguet runs a touchdown in from an unknown distance. Oki Anderson hits the extra point, and the Buffalo All-Americans win the game 51-0. Thank you for watching Week 3, 1920 APFA. This concludes week three. Stay tuned for week four in the coming weeks. Thank you.